All right, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as a courtesy to your fellow media members, as well as coaches and student athletes, please silence your cell phones. Please provide your name and media affiliation each time you ask a question during the press conference. If you're joining us via Zoom, please use the raise hand function for questions. We'll address questions in the room first and then get to Zoom if time allows. Recording these press conferences via video is prohibited. You may record the audio if you'd like. Uh, we're going to get started with the opening statement from head coach Starkey, and then following that, we'll have questions for the student athletes. So, coach, go right ahead. Yeah, we tried to make it interesting down the stretch, and that was our goal: is um, is to is to let everyone know, win or lose in this game, that that Kent State was here and and that we compete and we play together. And so, I'm really proud of our team, the way we played. Um, it was looking early like it was going to be a 35, 40 point blowout, and we, we, we wanted to have something to say about that. I thought our players did a really good job of executing at times and really keeping it close. Um, defensively, I thought we did a really good job on Hannah Hidalgo. I mean, you got to take something away. You got to try and take something away against a team as talented as them. Um, we just didn't expect Cintron to. Citron to have 29 at career high. I mean, she was just unconscious. She hit some shots. She hits. Now we helped her out. She had some open looks, but uh, she hit some difficult shots as well, and and really um, was was what separated them early. So proud of our fight. Uh, fourth quarter, we we made it interesting, and and uh, we they, we knew they had to we, they had to play the rest of the game. So um, last thing I'll say in the opening statement is I'm really proud of these two and their teammates. Um, Janae Tyler, obviously, uh, for a freshman, um, the, the, the level of composure that she's had and how she's played um, the last couple of weeks has been uh, phenomenal, uh, just phenomenal. And she's, she's put everybody on notice that uh, Kent State is, is, is coming, OK? We're, com we're coming next year, too. So, um, and then Katie Shoemate, like, just, you know, one of the <clears throat> one of the best competitors I've ever coached. And um, Katie and I have continued to get along for five years because she hates to lose as much as I do. And, um, and her teammates all love her. And that's the most important thing, the type of relationships that these players have formed this year. And, we have a MAC championship that can't be taken away from us. So these these girls, as sisters for the rest of their lives, will be championship teammates. We'll now open it up to questions for the student athletes. Kurt Rollin, Associated Press. Katie, um, can you talk about what enabled your team, from your perspective, to cut it back to thirteen and then fight back in the fourth quarter, cut it to twelve? Um, yeah, I would say that it was just our will and our determination. You know, we were playing for each other, and everyone knew that that we didn't want to go out by giving up and um, that we were going to continue to press forward and, and keep trying to make it a game and play hard. So all the credit to my teammates for that. The young, From the bottom of our roster to the top, you know, we, um, we never gave up, so. Hi, uh, John Rosenblum, Record Courier. Uh, Katie, I just wanted to ask, I mean, I just checked the stats. You led all players out there in rebounding. Um, KSU, I think, had a plus five edge, and you had 11. I'm just curious. I know I know that's who you are. I've seen your stats, and, and you get a ton of rebounds every game. But just tell me to fight. I mean, you're a guard. <laughs> you're a guard who fights as hard as heck out there on the glass. Just tell me a little bit about that part of your game. Um, yeah, I guess I've, I've never been the, the tallest or the strongest, so kind of just have to will myself to do it and just the um, the energy that we get and my teammates get from when we get second possessions and when we get a push in transition it's just you know it's just you put your mind to it and you and you try to do it uh, Jacob Shondo Kent Wired J Janae I believe it's now four of your last five games you've been in double figures just what has allowed you to have this much success in some of the most crucial games maybe you've ever played um, definitely my teammates. Uh, I'm doing it for my seniors. This isn't an individual game. These girls have worked so hard to get us here. So I'm just going to work just as hard, maybe even harder to do it for them. That's definitely what's gotten me this far. 
And then Katie, just from your perspective, what, is, what has it been like watching Janae from when she first stepped onto the team to where she's at right now? You know, it's, it's been great. I mean, we've always believed in Janae, but just the way that she's been able to, to step up and, and especially in big moments, it seems like Janae's always there and she's always fighting and she's just showing us what she's capable of and staying under control. And I think as a freshman, you know, that's extremely hard to do and we're just lucky to have her on our team. Uh, Jonah record career again. Uh, Katie, I was just curious. I mean, obviously, if something has to end, it might as well be given a great team like Notre Dame heck of a fight, that mm -hmm. environment, that crowd, getting this program back to March Madness. Just what did today as a whole uh, mean to you in terms of where you've left this program? Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not upset at all about the way we went out. You know, we won our MAC championship, and I got to play with these girls, and I think especially playing here, it was really fun. It was a great environment. You know, they, they cheered us out, great fans here, and the girls getting to play against them, you know, it was a great experience, and you know, every time I get to play with these girls, it, it was great. So, it was a good way to go out. Kelsey Horner, Count Wired. Um, Janae, what have you been able to learn from Katie and the other seniors? Um, I've learned a lot. Not even only basketball-wise, I've learned just like my presence outside of the court, but definitely on the court, I've learned how to have comp composure, you know, be confident with what I am and just follow in their footsteps. Definitely great mentors. And Katie, uh, what impact do you hope you left on Kent State basketball program? Um, I think just that um, you work hard and play together and get more accomplished and you can be goofy sometimes but when it's time to be serious it's time to be serious and to be about business and just play hard it's more fun when you're playing hard and playing together so we have time for a couple more questions for our student athletes Dane Richardson Kent State Radio Katie how is your relationship with the overall coaching staff coach Lax coach Page coach Fran and coach Starkey grown throughout your five years um I would say that it's not wavered at all and that it has grown and that they're, they've always believed in me and been here for me and they're the reason why I'm able to do or I was able to accomplish the things that I did and what we did together. You know, me and Coach Starkey have known each other for a real <laughs> long time now and I just think that, you know, I, I know that I wouldn't be here without them and our relationship, had it was good from the start and it's only gotten better. Uh, Joan with the record courier again. Uh, Janae, I'm just curious about the, the courage to go up. I mean, obviously, this is a team that has a lot of length, and, and you're a freshman, and this is your first time in this environment, and you were going up against, you know, women who were two, three inches taller than you and going up without fear. I think you were like six out of seven from the field at one point. Just talk about the courage to, you know, and, and how you overcome some height disadvantages sometimes out there. Um, definitely just knowing uh, – their weaknesses and how to get to the basket, being undersized, um, knowing just to get around their body rather than just trying to go straight up. That's really all I can do. <laughs> all right, thank you very much to our student athletes. Um, you guys are welcome thank you. to thank you. rejoin your teammates. And we'll now open it up to Q&A for Coach Starkey. Hey, Coach, Eric Hansen with Inside ND Sports. Um, my first question, you mentioned trying to take Hannah Hidalgo away. What, were, what was your strategy? What did you employ to try to take or limit her game? Well, I can't give all my secrets away. They still got <laughs> games to play, right? No, I, I think one of the biggest things was we just wanted to make sure that we were really extended to the ball. Uh, I mean, for the, for the last three days, we've just been yelling in practice, to the ball, to the ball, to the ball. And um, if you give her space to operate, Man, she's just so explosive and so dangerous. We knew that we, we didn't have a chance in this game if she got 25, 30 points, because what that means is then, then she's able to get points and distribute. And so it, she affects the game in so many different ways. We just wanted to make her shots difficult. 
uh, really crowd her. We also wanted to try and attack her and, and, and get her in a little bit of foul trouble. They had a little bit of foul trouble. We didn't get quite to the point where we wanted to, but, um, but man, she's, she's a tough matchup. Um, so once again, our, our defensive game plan on her was good, but it backfired in that Citron had just an unbelievable shooting day. And just following up on the foul trouble comment, I, you got Westbelled and, and Marshall in pretty early foul trouble when you guys were in the bonus. I'm not sure if it was the second or third quarter, like almost six minutes left. How intentional was that, and what was kind of your thinking there? Yeah, definitely the definitely the second quarter is when that happened. The third quarter was kind of the opposite of that, but um, it, it was well. She was just sitting here, Janae Tyler, and being able to throw the ball inside to her, and and her level of composure to be able to. I mean, she, you know, freshman in this environment. I mean, she did it in the MAC tournament last week as well. She just threw the ball, and she didn't get sped up. She took her time. Um, and finished over bigger opponents, and she just has a knack for scoring in the, around the basket. Um, and so uh, we're fortunate to get a few fouls on, on those two uh, early, and um, it paid dividends for us for sure as the game wore on. We just wanted to get to a point where the score was diminished so we could actually take advantage of some of that. Uh, Jonah Rosenblum, Record Courier. Uh, just curious. I mean, obviously a tough shooting night at times, but you guys actually out rebounded a team that has a ton of length, 37-32, 12-6 on the offensive glass. You know, obviously she may have had 11 uh, as a guard. I'm just curious, what does that say about the, the fight of this team? Because I think that's probably what stood out most from today is just how hard you attack the glass in the game overall. Well, I think we're walking out of this building, and our fight is not in question. I mean, our players came to play. Um, some things didn't go our way early. We had a hole to dig out of, but we had a – I guess you don't dig out of holes. You crawl out of them. But, uh, you know, we, we, we did some crawling. I mean, they, they kept fighting tooth and nail. And, and like I said, Notre Dame's the type of team that can, that can make runs on you real quick and get it to a 25, 30-point game. And we didn't let them do it, and I'm proud of that. Um, it – I think it just speaks to what what this group is about. Um, they're they're about each other, and they fought they fought for us as coaches. They fought for each other more than that. I mean, this is sisterhood. Um, what Katie said about that, she means that. You hear Janae Tyler speak about the mentors that that, that she had and the upperclassmen. Uh, that stuff matters. That stuff matters. And um, you know, I the the other statistic I want to point out is in Katie Shoemate's Two games against top ten opponents at LSU, twenty-two and eleven. At Notre Dame, twenty and eleven. She averaged twenty-one point, twenty-one and a half points, eleven rebounds against two top ten opponents. Kid's a future pro, without a doubt. And um, and like I said, just really proud for the Kent State community and for our players. Dane Richardson, Kent State Radio. Coach, now that you saw Janae do this throughout the MAC tournament and today, what can be the expectation for her in future years with your team, and what type of performance could we see her rise to in the following years? Well, we're going to run a lot of plays for her. <laughs> I mean, get, we're going to get Janae the ball. Um, and I think she's one of the – the thing about Janae that's really unique is she's – as a freshman, she's a lot of composure, but she's one of the more coachable uh, student athletes I've ever had. She really wants to. We talk about being coachable. It's not like it. Um, uh, there's there's two phases to that. You have to be a good listener. But if you don't try and apply that, it's not being coachable. Applying what you're told is being coachable, and she does that. She really tries to go out and do what you ask her to do. She wants to get better, um, and her teammates love uh, love the type of energy she bring energy she brings to our team. Jake Miller, Observer Sports. Coach, after making one three-pointer in the first half, your team got hot in the third, uh, making four from eight from one point. What did you say at halftime? And do you think the quality of those looks changed? You know, I, that's a good question. Uh, we, have, we, we talk about this a lot. Don't pass up good, okay? And I thought the shots that we got in the first half were good shots. They just didn't go down. Some of the first quarter shots, you, you're watching the same game I did, the ball was halfway down and bounced around and bounced out, and theirs just went in. And sometimes that happens, especially, I mean, it's different than the men's tournament. You're playing against the number, number seven, eight, nine team in the country. 
on their home floor. I mean, they're used to shooting in this environment. So um, we at halftime, the message was keep shooting good shots, keep shooting good shots, and uh, and they're and uh, they're either going to go in or they're not. But you don't make you know what's the old adage? You miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take. You miss all the shots that you don't take. But I mean, like it's like it doesn't make sense. But it, for us, it's like keep shooting good shots, right? Don't change what's gotten us here, and then just keep being who you are. And they play with a lot of courage. Um, Alex Isaiah, Kent State TV2. Um, Coach, what do you hope this team as a whole learns from this experience? Uh, there's a lot of lessons to learn, right? Um, I think the biggest thing is that it was possible, right? Um, that, that's the biggest thing, that, that you're capable we have we have a lot of a good underclassmen that are coming back and that they're they're capable of this. You get a taste of this, you want more of it. Um, they they also realize that some of the it, it makes you be a more effective coach because some of the things that you have been telling them all year, right, came to fruition. So all of a sudden you got a lot smarter as a coach because it happened, right? But uh, but they. They'll learn a lot of stuff. I think the biggest thing is just the sisterhood stuff. They've had the best time this past week and a half, just enjoying the tournament, fighting through that, you know, winning a championship, confetti falling on their heads and coming to Notre Dame and, and just all the hype around it. So uh, that they'll look back and, and have a lot of incredible memories. We've got time for just two more questions here. Um, Kelsey Horner, Kent Wired. Going into the second half, how did your defensive game plan change? Yeah, we talked about we like if if we didn't get more rigid on the defensive side of things and 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 really we had to turn up the volume. We're a good defensive team. We did not show that in the first half, and so we talked about that. Like this isn't who we are. You're more capable than this. We've got to get more resilient, tougher. We've got to talk better in screening action, and and come out and show people what you're made of. I was more worried about the defensive side. I thought I knew shots were going to fall for us, but we had to get more rigid on the defensive end. Um, we made a couple slight adjustments, but other than that, we just got tougher and, and did a better, much better job defensively. Uh, Jacob Shondell, Kent Wire, just what has it meant to you to not only coach Katie, but Abby and Michaela? I mean, I, I could spend a lot of time on that, but, but they, all three of them got to this situation where they are in different ways. You know, Michaela Morris, a, 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 a fifth year transfer who just blended right in and, and, and made a huge impact on our program from the start. Abby Ogle, all the ups and downs that she's gone through with, with injuries and that type of thing, but to keep fighting and to, to she made some big plays for us today. She gave us a great spark off the bench. Um, and then and then Katie, who I, was, I mean, I could talk for hours about her, but she's just um, she's just been a phenomenal student athlete. You know, she's going to graduate with a bio pre med major, and she, her plan was to go to medical school. But the way she's played the last year and a half, she's she's going to play. She's going to play. Keep playing as long. I told her keep playing as long as you can, and and you can be a doctor the rest of your life. So, In one more question. Dane Richardson, Kent State Radio Coach. What can you say about Deanna Gray and her ability? Corinne Hauser goes down in February. You don't have her for the rest of the year. Deanna ties a career high in the MAC title game and then puts up 12 today against the defensive ball pressure of Hannah Hidalgo. What can you say about her impact and her development going forward? I'll give you a, I'll give you a better stat than that. Five assists, three turnovers against maybe the best defensive guard in the country. I mean, the, the, the grit, the toughness, the fight that she had, um, she wasn't backing down from anybody today. And um, and th and that's the Deanna Gray that we recruited to Kent State. I mean, she's capable of that, and I'm really proud of her toughness. I'm I'm really proud of how her teammates continue to encourage her, even though she had a couple of rough moments uh, as as she took over that starting role. They they believed in her and they kept encouraging her, and that set her up for the success that she had down the stretch. All right, thank you very much, Coach, and congratulations on a great season. Thank you. <laughs> Hammond Communications will post a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com. Transcripts are provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly. Thank you for joining us. Can I give these away today? Yes.